Ooh, what's up guys? Of course, welcome to another Pokemon Wi-Fi battle with Joel's Thrill of course, the Scarender, and today we're going up against Green Scrafty. And he's a very, very good player in my opinion, for very good reasons. He has beaten me to play the Pulpin in you, and really, you can't go too accustomed to a guy like this because he will beat you down. So, I had that in mind <laughs> to this battle and actually decided to bring a team that has a good synergy and are um, designed to deal with threats in this tier. So, it's not as... Um, it's not the highest of tier in this tier, but more they are made to deal with the Pokemon that are in higher in this tier. Um, I am using Clawlister, Trevenant, Rhyperior, Hunchcrow, Articuno and Tentacruel. And basically, the reason I have two water types is because water types tends to be right, you know, being somewhat good actually this tier. So it's worth having two types if you can utilize it well. And um, I think I have the team to do just that. And my opponent here is bringing his end game, of course, a Mega Sharpedo, Alakazam, Chestnut, Salamence, which actually dropped after the Mega Evolution got banned, Rotom Oven, and Yellicent. And really. The biggest threats on his team are actually his three main sweeper, which is Salmon, Alka Sam, and Sharpedo, who can do high damage on my team, you know, without a doubt, really. So I need to try to void them off and try to have the right matchup when they come in. And basically, I'm going to start with Clawlister, because Clawlister hits hard on everything on his team, and it is specs, and it's fully defensive. So I hope to be able to fend off whatever comes in. I mean, if we start off with Rodem, then I am in trouble. But that is really the only Pokemon that can fend me off properly. So having that in mind, um, I'm just going to fend him off and hope I get enough momentum to actually win this game. So, of course, with that in mind, guys, let's go. Alright, we're doing it. We're doing it. Like I said, I'm going to start with Clawless. Uh, my opponent's going to start with Jellicent, which is great for me. I don't know exactly how well I can take... Um, a Shadow Ball or a Will Whistle that matter, but I'm gonna stay in anyway and just go for Dark Pulse. And I am, like I said, Specs this. I should do a significant amount of damage. He goes for Shadow Ball and I take that like a, well, champ. I do still have enough HP to be able to deal with the Sharpedo if he decides to, um, if he decides to switch out, that is. He's actually gonna go for Recovery here, predicting me actually to switch out. Or rather, since it does outspeed. I do believe that he is feeling that he can probably stall me out, so it's not a bad tactic and see if the mid-max is in his favor, but it isn't. It definitely isn't, and it's gonna just toll him down. So he's just gonna sack this one or have to switch out. He does the correct player, then go to Chestnut, and predicting that I am locked after all, and the Heresy is coming in, just a great name really. And uh, I do score a crit here, but it is resisted, so it's not gonna matter that much in the long run. And... Uh, Basically, I do predict him here to either go for lead seed or, you know, maybe subbing or anything like that. So he predict me to predict him going for Trevenant, which I were. So he's gonna pull a double switch on me and go to Rotom. And after this, he's gonna do another excellent prediction and predicting me not to be in, well, feeling safe of staying in, of course. And you're gonna switch out to my Tentacruel. Like I said, he did see that one coming and he's go for the Volt Switch. So right now, here in Get Go, I was like, alright. I need to stop being predictable. He he's gonna just tear me down. He, I either try to be cool and try to stay in, or I just fodder things off. So yeah, like I said, I did not feel that graceful in the beginning. So I'm gonna go into my assault vested Trevenant because I know I can deal with everything really. And he's going for the call mine and run set up, which is scary because it is sashed after all. But um, then again, like I said. I am, um, damn it! <laughs> I am a salt vessel. I should be able to deal with this rider properly. He's going for Shadow Ball, and it does over half. But I do have the Horn Leech, of course, and going to Nom Nom my way up again, which is great, of course. And I don't bring it down to a Sash. And also, I didn't want to take another Shadow Ball, so I'm just gonna go to my excellent and mean spirited Gilbertal or Hunchcrow. And he's not gonna take this Shadow Ball properly or good by any means, but in the given circumstance, I saw that I at least could take it and then retaliate with a Sucker Punch, and predicting him to think that I have the marvelous move that is the Pursuit, which I don't. So, yeah, I get the Mox Boost here, and now I do a little wrong play, to be honest. I do predict him here to bring the Rotom, and uh, I was very sure he's gonna go for um, Will O Wisp, but he just goes directly for a Hidden Power Ice. 
which is terrible because I had an honest chance to go for another sucker punch, which wouldn't have taken him out, but it would have done some damage. So I'm just gonna go with my Rhyperior. I know that Desotroya could come in and just really fend himself off and trying to do some significant amount of damage on anything really. So he goes for that Specs Hidden Power and it doesn't hurt too much now, does it? It still is, you know, in a range where I don't think I can deal properly with either Sharpedo or a Salamence. But a two-hit Rock Blast was more than enough to take out this Rotom, which is great, of course. And um, now comes the terrible heresy. And uh, really, at this point, I knew that I have to switch out to Godric, my Assault Vest Trevenant. Because it's really nothing I can do for this range, plus I really see that I can get some momentum if I'm trying to fend this off. So go for Drain Punch, a very safe move, and yeah, obviously Drain Punch would have helped him out a lot if that were to happen. So he's going to Jellison just to faring off. I went for Rock Slide, predicting him to bring the Salamence. So a great play on my opponent's part, because it doesn't take out the Jellison. But I was predicting here that he might go for Crubber trying to fend his one off, and then I will get the honest chance to get some recovery back. But he just goes for damage, and that's definitely a good play, because that means that I won't get as much HP back. Plus, he get a safe switch into his Salamence. And his Salamence is truly, truly a demon among demons, and uh, basically, I really, really need to, uh, I need to step up my game here. I was really hoping for him bringing the Sharpedo here, because uh, he might not suspect me to have the Drain Punch. But he goes right for the Salamence, and like I said, there is really nothing I want to try to do here. I know I can live a rock slide, and basically I let him set up a Dragon Dance if that was the case. And Articuno is full defensive, which max HP and attack, or max HP and, sp and defense. And it's a great response to the Solomons, and he knows this, and he can't really, really far off the Solomons just yet. There's a big risk of trying to let it stay in. And I knew that, and just went for the, the Freeze Try, which actually will take out this Heresy. Which I didn't see coming to be honest, I really thought it would take this hit. So now we get a safe switch into his Sharpedo instead. And really, 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 I was thinking, you know, what would be my best bet here? Probably go for free strike, stay in hoping that he doesn't go for um, a speed boost. Um, in that way showing, or rather faking, that I'm not that defensive. Uh, he goes for protect and going to, um, of course, to get the momentum he needs. But, at least I get an honest chance to fire off my Tentacruel, and I know my Clawlister is fully defensive, so I really really hope that my Clawlister and the amount of HP it is can actually take a crunch. I know it is supposed to do around 60% if it is, uh, even with Strong Jaw, so I'm going to bet on that. Like I said, I'm just gonna fire off the Tentacruel, and it really didn't do much this battle. Sorry Tentacruel. But at least, you know, the only reason it exists is to rapid spin away things for Articuno. So anyway, Amber is coming in, like I said, it is supposed to do around 60%, but it does more than that. But not enough, not enough to kill me. I actually do live with a slither of health and I'm able to actually retaliate with an Aura Sphere, which will annihilate this Jarpeed, of course, because, well, defenses. So yeah, that is great, that is awesome. Good thing I didn't go for Life Orb, <laughs> to be honest. And it's gonna bring the Skyrim here, and this will definitely like just a mind game, to be honest. Because I knew that he has an honest chance to set up before he takes me out and, and gets his Moxie boost. I just hard switched to Articuno, hoping it doesn't have Outrage. Because I'd have Outrage, then would be a 2 hit KO even without the boost. But I actually go for Dragon Dance, which is great. And uh, what's even better is that, like I said, an Outrage won't take me out, and neither will a Dragon Claw, which he was packing. Which means that this Freeze Drive will be more than enough to <laughs> kill this Salamence, and I actually win! And, uh, yeah, shit, that was a close game. I mean, sure, I got four pokes left, but none of them were in a fightable position to deal with a Salamence. And in conjunction with the speed boost of the Dragon Dance and that the Moxie is yet from killing, yeah, that was definitely something I couldn't risk. So, yeah, um, Green Scrafty, really, GG man. Um, like I said before, he had speeded me before. And um, basically this time I just, I really brought a team that I thought could prove itself worthy and for a player that is that good that he is. And basically I came out on top and I think I did that with a bit of luck and um, I really, to be honest, the momentum he got in the beginning really made me question myself because I really took like a step back and like, 
All right, I I can't I can't play around this. He's going to defeat me by safely alone if I keep doing this. And I think I'm you know I threw him a bit off guard. And in conjunction with me using some weird sets, may or may not actually have forced him to stay in parts where he actually didn't need to. So I came out on top by by a bit of skill, but also um, I must say that a bit of luck was definitely in it. Truly. So yeah, like I said, scrafted GG. Truly, uh, and I hope you guys are watching. Definitely enjoy this battle. If you want to battle Greenscraft, make sure to check him out on Twitter. And I think as a YouTube channel too. And if any has that, I'm gonna link that down below. So make sure to give this guy a call because he's a great battler. I can't really stress that enough. So anyway, guys, make sure to leave a like and remember to subscribe to the channel if you haven't that before. And remember, the sky is limit. All right. So have a good day and take care. All right. Bye.